Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss the common ion effect. Today's essential question, how could the addition of a salt to an acid change the ionization of the acid? Right, so the common ion effect, what is it? The common ion effect, or the definition of the common ion effect, is a shift in equilibrium caused by the addition of a compound having an ion in common with the dissolved substance. Okay, we'll go in, I'll give you examples in a moment and this will make more sense, but basically what you're doing is you're taking two different things, dissolving them in the same solution, and when they dissolve, one of the ions is in common. So the presence of a common ion suppresses the ionization of a weak acid or base. So it reduces, okay, that's another way to look at it. This presence of this common ion that we're speaking of reduces the ionization of a weak acid or base. Um, and the presence of this common ion will change the equilibrium position in accordance with Le Chatelier's principle. All right, so now let's look at an example and talk ourselves through this. Okay, so for our example, we have um, two things here. We have hydrofluoric acid and we have sodium fluoride, a salt. So we have an acid and a salt, hydrofluoric acid and sodium fluoride. And we're gonna take both of them and stick them in some water, the same water. All right, so starting with the sodium fluoride, when we take solid sodium fluoride salt, dump it in some water, the sodium fluoride completely ionizes into sodium and fluoride, um, not reacting with the water and leaving H2O behind. So there you go. Now, if we look at the hydrofluoric acid, when we mix hydrofluoric acid with water, we end up getting hydronium or H pluses, but often that would really be hydronium ions and fluorine ions, and we would still have water. Okay, so now we have talked independently about dissolving sodium fluoride in water and dissolving hydrofluoric acid in water, but what does that have to do with the common ion effect? Well, these two things are happening in the same water. Okay, so at the same time, in the same water, we're dumping in sodium fluoride and hydrofluoric acid. So now let's go back and talk about what ions are present and what that means um, to our solution. All right, so if you guys remember um, when we were talking about acids and bases and we talked about the hydrolysis of different salts, we need to look at this sodium, think about acid and base, where it came from. It could have come from NaOH, which is a strong base, which means the sodium is just gonna be floating around, not really involved with anything because the sodium is a weak conjugate acid. Right, so not much is gonna happen there. Even though the sodium's there, we can ignore it. All right, then if we look at the F, that could have come from something like HF, hydrofluoric acid, which is a weak acid, which makes fluorine a strong conjugate base. So fluorine is something we need to think about. All right, so let me Make a little room here. So fluorine is definitely hanging out and we still have water hanging out. And then looking at the hydrofluoric acid, we'll have hydrogen or H3O if we'd prefer, fluorine and H2O. And these are happening at the same time. So think about this. When we add NaF, we are creating more F, 
minuses or fluoride ions, which also affects our HF reaction, right? So what is that going to do? It's almost like just physically adding more of this. What's that going to do to equilibrium? Think about Le Chatelier. It's going to push the reaction towards the products, Rup, sorry, towards the reactants, which means less of this is going to ionize. So the common ion effect is going to reduce the ionization on our acid. This would also happen with a base. If we're dissolving less hydrofluoric acid, creating less fluorine or fluorine ions, we are also creating less hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions. So our concentration of H3O is less. What does that mean? That means we're going to have a um, higher pH, meaning closer to seven, right? Going towards seven, which means this whole thing, the whole solution is going to be less acidic because we added this salt and not just any salt, a salt with a common ion, right? Fluorine. All right. So that is um, thinking about how common ion effect changes how a um, acid deionizes or ionizes, sorry, how an acid ionizes in water. And with a common ion, the ionization of the acid is going to be less. And in this case, being an acid, it is going to make the solution less acidic. Okay, let's practice a, a calculation um, with the common ion effect. One, this will show you how to do calculations, but two, it will, it will show mathematically how adding a common ion actually changes the pH and the ionization of a solution. All right, so here's the problem. The equilibrium concentration of hydrogen in a one molar hydrofluoric acid solution is 2.7 times 10 to the negative two molar and the percent dissociation or ionization is 2.7%. Calculate the H plus and the percent dissociation of HF in a solution containing one molar HF, again, but also mixed with one molar NAF. All right, let's start by writing a few equations here, a few reactions. Um, so we'll start with HF. So HF, aqueous mixed with water is going to give us reversible reaction because HF is a weak acid is going to give us H3O and fluoride ion and then for NAF we have NAF solid plus H2O this guy is dissolving, so it's a one-way reaction. It's going to give us Na1 plus plus F1 minus plus H2O. Now, this is just like the problem we did earlier, so we know that Na is really not going to be involved, right? So what we have is what we're interested in here is the fluorine. All right, so what do we know? We know the concentration of HF to start is 1.0 molar. We also know that our NAF is 1.0 molar. And because for every one NAF, we're going to end up with one Na and one F, we know that our final concentration of F is going to be one molar. So far, so good. All right, so now let's set up our rice table. And 
for a reaction, we have HF and H3O and F minus. So our starting concentration of HF is, yeah, let me change colors here, one molar. We also have a final or a starting concentration of F. It's also going to be one molar. And our starting concentration of water, or sorry, hydro hydronium ion is zero. Um, now, the reason that um, F is one molar starting is because of this guy here. All right. So now our change, our HF is going to decrease by some amount. Our H3O is going to increase by that same amount, as is our fluoride ion concentration. So our change, or our equilibrium concentration, is going to be 1.0 minus x. 0 plus x equaling x, and um, f is going to be 1.0 plus x. All right, let's move on to a page that's uh, got a little bit more room here. All right, so we know that Ka equals the concentration of, um, I'm talking about final, of course, or equilibrium concentration of H3O times Rf divided by our, our, our final concentration of Hf. All right, so we should be able to plug and chug this here. Our Ka, I forgot what that was. Our Ka is right here, 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. So we'll have 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth equals the concentration of H3O which is X times the concentration of F here, which is 1.0 plus X divided by the concentration of HF, which is 1.0 minus X. Okay, we're going to assume that this X here, this change is so small that at, it'll round out adding or subtracting from one. So we're going to ignore those, although we do need to go back and double check it. So that means we'll end up with 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth equals X times 1.0 divided by 1.0 and in this case 1 divided by 1 is 1 so that means that our x equals 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth so now we need to check that our assumptions were valid right so we're going to take our x which is 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth divided by our initial concentration of F. And often you might have to do these twice if the initial concentration of F and HF are different, but being that they're the same, we only have to do it at once. So divided by one, and when you do the calculation, you find out that that number is less than 5%, which means our assumption was valid which means our x indeed equals 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. And so now plugging that in, because we want to know our H plus or H3O concentration. So if we plug that into x, oh gosh, look, it's the same. So that equals, let me get rid of some of this stuff, our concentration of H3O. All right, so now let's go back and look at um, the, the concentration of H's um, we, when we just have 
HF, and that concentration is 2.7 times 10 to the negative 2, which is a lot more. So as soon as we mixed in the, um, the salt, the NAF salt, we ended up Get ending up with less H3Os or H pluses because less HF actually dissolved. So let's check our percent ionization or dissociation. So percent ionization equals the final hydronium ion concentration divided by the initial acid concentration. So that's going to be 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth divided by 1.0 times 100. And that gives us a percent ionization of 0.072. Which is much, much less than the ionization of HF when it's just HF and water. Okay, and before we're done for the day, let's just because check the difference in the pH between HF alone and HF when mixed with. NAF. Okay, so if you remember, pH equals negative log of the concentration of H3O. So the pH for HF would be about 1.57. And the pH in a solution containing both HF and NAF is 3.92. So as you can see, the solution becomes less acidic when we mix a salt with this weak acid and the salt contains the common ion. The common ion in this case being fluoride. Okay, so there you go. Common ion effect. That's it for today. Have a good one.